So let's start with the all important battery. Let's optimize it. We'll go to settings, then to battery. If you haven't already, just toggle on battery percentage. This helps identify the battery level. Now we'll go to charging. With charge limit, the iPhone will charge to a preset limit and this preserves the battery over the long term. Currently I have it at 100% but you can dip it down to 80% if you so wish. This may not be suitable for everybody so you can change to the percentage you like and if you want to keep it at 100% we also have an option for optimized battery charging. And the way it works is if you charge your iPhone overnight, it will charge it to 80% until shortly before your alarm goes off, by which time it will top up to 100%. Again, another way to preserve your battery. Now let's go back to battery and let's scroll down and we can see a list of applications which are using the battery and what percentage of battery they use. You can also press show activity and if you do have apps which are working in the background, Here's where you can check. We'll go back to settings, then to general, scroll down and we have background app refresh. Here we have a list of apps which are permitted to check for software updates when they're not being used and they often download and install software in the background. Needless to say this draws battery life and many of these apps engaged in this background app refresh don't need to do so. However, I would suggest leaving banking, navigation and security related apps turned on, but social media apps and general apps, they can just be turned off. If you look at the top of the screen, we have background app refresh, which is on, tap that, and we have a couple of options here. Currently I have it on Wi-Fi and cellular data. This means the background app refresh will work on Wi-Fi or cellular data. Cellular data uses a lot of power and we'll come on to that shortly. So the best option is Wi-Fi. If you want to turn off background app refresh, you can turn it off altogether. However, it does have some use as mentioned earlier. Now let's have a quick word about auto brightness. We'll go back, back again, and back to the main screen. Let's go to accessibility and display and text size. Scroll down to the bottom and there you'll see auto brightness. So auto brightness will dim the brightness if you're in a dark place and this is the number one way to save battery. Now if you don't want to use auto brightness and many people don't, the best way to control the brightness is to go to the control center and turn the brightness down here manually. Next up is location services. So let's go back Back again to the main settings window, we'll go to privacy and security, just here, and location services. Location services gives apps the ability to know your exact location and most of the time they don't really need to know that. So what I would advise is to go down this list and identify any app which has always beside it and just ask yourself does this app need to know my location all of the time? It's quite common to see while using beside an app and that's totally okay but if you feel some apps don't need to know your location at all just select never. The final option on this list is system services. If you tap this we have some system related services which use location. I would leave these however if you scroll down to the bottom you have product improvement, iPhone analytics, routing and traffic, improved maps these you can safely turn off. So let's move on to 5G. We'll go back, 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 scroll up to the top and we have cellular. Select this and then we have cellular data options. Tap here, voice and data. 5G uses a lot of power but we have some options which can mitigate it. Firstly we have 5G on. This is the most battery intensive option of all. This will use 5G whenever possible. The next option is 5G Auto. This again uses 5G, however, if the performance isn't great, it will drop down to LTE. LTE, which stands for long-term evolution, is basically 4G. This offers the greatest battery saving. So if you're prepared to sacrifice some speed for battery savings, then LTE is the option to save the most battery. The biggest battery killer, is 5G on. A couple more things related to cellular. 
Wi-Fi uses less power than cellular, so if you have a choice between the two, go for Wi-Fi. And this comes into play if you use iCloud backups. Let's go back to settings. Then scroll up to the top, tap your name, go to iCloud, then iCloud Backup. And just here we have backup over cellular. As you can see, I have already toggled this off. But here it says, when not connected to Wi-Fi, use your cellular network to automatically backup to iCloud. This may cause you to exceed your cellular data plan, as well as use a lot of battery. Right. This is one for the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max, and its refresh rate will go back to the main settings window. We'll go down the list to accessibility, then motion. And just at the bottom, we have limit frame rate. But being battery conscious, you can trim this down to 60 frames per second. This will save some battery. Now, let's make two adjustments in one place. We'll go back to the main settings window. Then we'll go to display and brightness. Scroll down. And the first option is raise to wake. This is enabled by default. And when you lift up your iPhone, the screen comes on. Disabling it will save a bit of power. The second option is the always on display. It's a nice feature, but it too nibbles at the battery. You can just toggle it off here. Now you may receive notifications on your phone and these also take up a lot of power because they have to light up the screen each time. Let's go back to settings and scroll down the list to notifications. Just here scroll down this list and you'll see which apps are sending notifications. Any which you feel you don't need notifications from, just click and turn off allow notifications. Next up are widgets. Dynamic widgets like the weather and stock apps use power because they have to keep refreshing to get the latest info. And there are also live action widgets which provide live sports scores and they use even more battery. If you can live without them, here's how you remove. Click and hold on the desktop, tap the minus and remove. If you have one of these widgets on your lock screen, go to settings. Go back to the main settings window, go to wallpaper, customize, tap your widget and remove, then press done. Next, let's optimize for mail app. So we'll go back to settings on the main settings screen, scroll down to the bottom, go to apps and locate the mail app just here. Go to Mail Accounts and click on Fetch New Data. By default, your iPhone uses Push. And what this means is if you have a Gmail account, for example, as soon as an email comes into the Gmail server, it will push it down to your iPhone. What this means, though, is that you need to have a constant connection with that Gmail server, and this takes up battery power. So what we can do is turn off Push, and we have some options down here for fetch and what your iPhone will do now is check in periodically so every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes hourly or manually this will save a lot of battery I would suggest if you are expecting important emails maybe better to stay on push however if they are social media and relaxed type emails then every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes is quite acceptable now let's go to low power mode we'll go back to the main settings window We'll go to battery and just here we have low power mode. Low power mode is handy when the battery gets really low and you just need to stretch it out. It's not advisable to use it all of the time as it does reduce performance and functionality. However, if you need it, you can turn it on here. You can also add it to your control center by swiping down to the control center, pressing and holding, add a control. Just here, in search, type in low for low power mode, tap here, and you can see you can quickly toggle on or off from the control center. When it's toggled on, it reduces the display brightness, minimizes system animations, 
stops background at refresh, but most importantly, you can still make and receive phone calls, access the internet, send and receive messages and email, and open all of your apps. Next is another tip for iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max users with OLED screens, and it's dark mode. Dark mode can save you battery because if a pixel is turned off, then it's not draining power. To enable dark mode, just go to the control center, press and hold brightness, and we have dark mode here. And if you want to access it directly from the control center, again, just press and hold, add a control, go to search, type in dark, select dark mode, and you can see it's now added. Next is Apple Intelligence. So for this, we'll go to settings, and just here, Apple Intelligence and Siri. Now Apple Intelligence brings a lot of AI driven features to the iPhone, but it does do a lot of background processing and there are other additional tasks which are carried out right there on the phone and hence leads to higher energy consumption. If you played around with it and you think, eh, not for me, just turn off Apple Intelligence and hey, you can always turn it back on in the future. Another general tip is to always keep your iPhone updated with the latest iOS. So for this, we go back to settings We'll go to General. Within Software Update, you'll see if there's an available software update for you to install. And that's it for today's video on how to save battery life on your iPhone running iOS 18. If you found these tips helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone who could do with a battery boost. Let me know in the comments which tip worked best for you and what percentage is your iPhone on at the end of the day. And let me know if you have any of your own tricks to save battery life. Thanks very much for watching and I wish you a great day ahead.